This is uh, Mark Nickerson. We'll start the special meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Today is August 19th. It's 7.02. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, this first item is delegations. If anyone would like to speak to the Board of Selectmen on any items this evening. Um, you can raise your hand. We'll unmute you um, and or unmute yourself or jump into the chat um, and let us know that you'd like to speak. Anyone? Anyone? Oh, I don't know how, uh, let's see, you are muted yourself there. Um, there, there you go. go. How does that sound? I can hear you. Okay. Your uh, name and address for the record? Okay. And Great, then, thanks. This is Kathy Cassidy. I live at 14 Rockwood Drive in Waterford, Connecticut. However, I do own and pay taxes in the town of East Lyme, and that is at 488 Main Street. And I am also here as a board member of the East Lyme Public Trust Foundation. So I'm just curious as to um, the reason why this, was, this meeting was called on such a short notice. Okay. Anyone else? I, we we don't answer questions at delegations. You can you can pose statements. Or okay. Do, uh, Thank you. My first time on, on one of no your problem. meetings. Oh, I know that, Kathy. So, um, yeah, we don't uh, we don't respond uh, to questions and get into a debate at delegations. Um, we can answer questions during the regular time of the meeting. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, then we'll move on to our meeting. Uh, this discussion, this discussion of possible action, the allocation of FEMA funds to the public safety project. Currently the funds are at $1,730,607.61. Retirement penny. Um, so there, there is a, um, Obviously, this project's been going on for quite a while. We've been struggling on how to uh, pay for the difference um, of, of what was appropriated, then the million dollars that was promised, and then the difference in that. And, um, and we're sitting out here today with uh, FEMA funding coming back to the town um, to, use, to be used at our discretion. And um, um, and that's what this meeting's all about, is the appropriation of the $1.7 million. Um, the, Paul, you, um, you you're, uh, Mr. Daigle, you're chair of the vision committee. We had had uh, multiple discussions on the project itself, and, and um, we're at a point now where this $1.7 million uh, we're asking to be allocated, uh, or appropriated, I should say. Um, but we had some other questions. I mean, there's been a... <laughs> There's been a lot said that you know, the details, oh my God, a year and a half of details haven't been presented um, publicly and questions weren't um, answered. Um, and a lot of political play is being made um, uh, on that. So Paul, for the second time, I know, I know you've answered many of these questions already um, in, in the vision committee. Um, some members weren't present, members of the public. So um, I know you have uh, some prepared um, things that you want to get out on the record um, that we're cleaning some things up. You're muted, Paul. So, and you have to unmute yourself. Thank so, you, Mark. You got it. Appreciate it. So, um, yeah, as, uh, I just want to review in general terms uh, some information that uh, was provided during the last Board of uh, Finance meeting. Um, and uh, make a commitment on, on going forward. Uh, the final cost numbers can't be determined at this time pending our action on the use of the FEMA funds from a financing standpoint. Uh, but independent of that decision, um, I did a comparison of the uh, project costs uh, uh, submitted by um, the Vision Committee and uh, Silva Petroselli and the uh, comparison of the finance project cost that was uh, submitted as evidence uh, at the Board of Finance meeting. Uh, I will let you know without getting into great detail, there was a slight adjustment made to both numbers regarding uh, what I presented and what was presented to the Board of Selectmen 
at our meeting, uh, there was $6,670 that was not included in that $7.17 million project cost. The two items that were not included was the, the asbestos inspection for $1,670 and the uh, $5,000 worth of furniture that the uh, police department, uh, with the consent of the town, used to purchase some furniture for the building based on uh, that furniture being on sale. That information was not provided to, to Silver Petroselli and was not included in their, their total amount. Uh, so that brings their total amount to seven, um, seven dollars That's well, that is still within the $7.2 million uh, that we have discussed and had previously moved forward to the Board of Finance. But it is a slight adjustment of $6,670. The Board of Finance information that was entered into the record uh, was uh, overstated by $5,839 uh, and it was understated by $3,000, specifically the cost for the bid off for the elevator cab was listed at $198,000 and the actual bid off price from the submitted by the bid was $201,051. Bottom line, uh, those va the, the values of what was presented at the Board of Finance and the modified S&P number is within $2,200 of each other. So in my opinion, uh, the $7.2 million is, is an accurate uh, cost for executing the project. The next area that, that was partially addressed uh, by Anna in that presentation regarding the financial costs uh, for bonding of uh, the $7.2 million um, was included in that meeting. Uh, it, uh, Anna did some calculations and it came up to the, the total bonding cost. Anna was uh, 9.7 million, I believe, looking at the meeting minutes to borrow the 7.2. Um, uh, the short-term borrowing numbers uh, was not included in the presentation and Anna and I've had a discussion and we plan to break out all the f financial costs and how much we borrow will drive what that number is pending our action tonight. So the plan moving forward is when we have the final number that we are gonna borrow for the project, we will present at the uh, Board of Finance meeting um, the actual short-term and bonding costs above and beyond the amount of money we bond. The second area uh, that wasn't clearly uh, presented uh, during the Board of Finance meeting was the operating costs for the building, specifically uh, electricity and propane uh, what the town has paid for the building that we've owned since last May uh, to date. Uh, and then I'll work with Anna to come up with a forecast uh, based on uh, those utility costs, which uh, we consider to be operating costs until we actually occupy the building uh, once we get under contract. So we'll come up with a rest estimate so we have the taxpayers understand what, what we'll be paying at that time. But the third area is um, uh, future CNRE costs. Uh, there's been quite a bit of discussion about not replacing both air handling units, not replacing the roof, and uh, not replacing the parking lot. Uh, we will break those numbers out, uh, put them aside. We have those numbers. They, we have estimates from Silver Petroselli, uh, and those will be future costs. They'll be future maintenance costs. Uh, and I will walk through the rationale for why um, we don't think uh, it's the right thing to to borrow money to execute those uh, those those portions, those replacements at this time, those all three of those things still have life left in them. They're not failed. Uh, they have a, between a five and a 10 year lifespan before they will need to be replaced. And um, to borrow money against that uh, and pay interest for 20 year bonding uh, doesn't make financial sense. Uh, also, not doing them at this time gives us the opportunity for applying low SIP money in the future to cover those costs or to have the town put money aside into our CNRE account to actually pay, you know, pay for them right up, right up by financing those costs. So I'll, I'll present and address uh, those items. Um, a lot was said, uh, Paul, or, or some of those um, exaggerated phantom numbers that the Board of Finance was putting out were based off of the original presentation by the architect, which was a 
a, a renovate as new project. And I just want to stop you for a second and thank you for letting me butt in here. A renovated as new project was taking the entire building and, and, and really making it brand new. We were never planning on that. Remember the schools were going to be renovated as new and that price tag was going to be an $85 million price tag to renovate the schools as new. The town chose not to go in that direction, but to, to, to uh, renovate the schools uh, as much as appropriate for $38 million and hold capital projects at bay that will be done later. For an example, we just spent this $38 million and we're still going out to bond for the $38 million. There's a new roof that's going to be needed at the Niantic Center School in the next couple of years. The school, the Board of Ed plans on bringing that forward uh, next year to us for financing. This is a school we just dumped $12 million into. We knew that we weren't going to be building the entire school brand new over again, that there would be capital needs in the future. We admit that that's the case here. We admit that someday that parking lot would have to be redone, but what, what's there now is a crack seal and um, I, uh, a project where you blacktop it with, with, with crack seal. That's all. We're not planning on digging it up. The original um, renovate is new called for uh, tearing up the, the asphalt, regrading it, putting in new storm drains. None of that is on the table, nor is it going to be on the table. That was kind of a wishful thinking if we were to do everything brand new. So they took that price tag and blew it up that all this stuff was needed and that was going to be the actual cost. That's far from the truth. The truth is $7.2 million is what we need. And yes, it's a building the town owns. And yes, capital projects will be needed in the future. We already own the building. So yes, there's electric bills that are being paid right now and propane bills and, 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 and security bills and all the other things that might come up. We, um, we own this building. We have um, Parks and Rec going out there cutting the grass. That's a fact. So, um, and, and, and so I, I wanted to stop there and just remind people that, you know, there was talk about this canopy, this grandiose vision of a canopy over the parking lot. Um, that wasn't part of the plan, nor is it part of the plan, nor will it be part of the plan. It's not a future capital item. It's not an operating cost and it's not something part of this project. So to inflate the plan to inflate the numbers, to exaggerate that, is um, inappropriate and certainly not truthful. So I wanted to make sure we, we were very clear on the fact that the plan we have is the plan we have. And it will last, uh, you know, we have an air handler up on the roof that is far newer than some of the air, air handlers on Board of Ed buildings. So we're not going to replace an air handler that works. And we, we uh, our, our architects have, have gone on record saying that's a good for another five years with good maintenance. The roof that we are going to reseal as part of the project is good for another 10 years plus. You're not going to rip a roof off a building now if it's good for another 10 years. That'd be, we just don't do that in the, in the municipal world. We use it right to the end. So, um, you know, we, 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 we finished the school two years ago and we're already talking about uh, uh, putting a roof on one of the schools. So, yes, there's capital projects in the future. This is a building that will need that kind of upkeep. It's a 30,000 square foot building. It's going to need upkeep and, and capital projects. And depending on what we put on the second floor, it's going to need money to, to, to outfit the second floor. We always talked about that. We never said we were going to renovate the whole 30,000 square feet. That was also said and also part of the record um, that the future cost of that building. Depending on what the town decides to do a couple of years out, whether we make it office space, storage space, meeting space, um, community group space, rental space, that's what will determine what the cost is to renovate the upstairs. Right now, it's going to be uh, left vacant uh, and therefore no money will be put into it. Thank you, Paul.
You're welcome. So that that was uh, that was addressing the related costs that was uh, presented at the Board of Finance meeting. Uh, the third category was a list of items that were labeled as being omitted from the project. Uh, and uh, those items, uh, I will plan on going over one by one. Uh, if, Thank if you. Go back in front of the, um, the Board of Finance. Uh, there's a couple items in there that are already in the base bid and don't need to be counted twice. And there's other items that are, are not required uh, because it's been determined that they're not needed for the project. And none of them, none of those items, which totaled $850,000, uh, affect the operability of the building, nor do they represent the need for future dollars to, uh, to quote, uh, put them into the building. So uh, I've had a discussion with the chair, chairman of the Board of Finance. Uh, I've committed to, to pre prevent, present that information uh, accordingly. Uh, things that were not included in the project had previously been discussed and addressed in the vision committee meetings, voted on by the vision committee. They have not been, uh, they've not been held back from the public. Uh, but uh, in, in respect to the Board of Finance, I, I plan on addressing all of them uh, when we go back uh, in front of the Board of Finance pending our action uh, this evening. So, uh, Transparency has been the goal of the vision committee uh, from the beginning. The project costs have been transparent. The related costs uh, will work. Uh, will work to uh, categorize those. Uh, the related finance costs that were presented to the board of finance only re represented one or two years. It didn't resent. It didn't represent the full financial cost of the bonding. Uh, Anna has that information. She provided it uh, when asked during the uh, board of finance meeting. Uh, and that's subject to change based on our action tonight uh, on the FEMA money. So in, in, the, in the measure, in the attempt to, to reach common ground on, on the facts, the project costs, the related costs, um, I, I think uh, we, we owe that uh, to the Board of Finance and we owe it to the residents of East Lyme uh, so that we can make our final decision on moving forward with this project. And I, I wanna thank uh, Anna for having some preliminary discussions with me and Ann Santoro as well. And uh, all that information that was submitted to the Board of Finance uh, as part of the record, uh, I will be prepared to, to address with the Board of Finance. So um, there is one other thing I'd like just to open to general discussion. There was a public comment about potentially uh, delaying the Sally Port and Cells uh, in doing that two, three, four years down the road uh, with uh, money from the sale of the, uh, of the current Main Street building. Um, my thoughts on that, and we'll see how the rest of the board feels, is two, uh, every year that we, we continue not to have that, um, we'll be paying $48,000 plus to Waterford. So the cost of the Sally Ports, if you will, uh, not in the next year, because it's gonna take us about a year to finish this project once we get the authorization to start. But every year afterwards that we delay the, the Sally Port and, and retention cells, we're gonna be spending about another $50,000 renting the facilities at, at Waterford. So that'll be a cost that'll be added on to the construction costs of the Sally Port and detention cells. And two years from now, three years from now, the cost that we have in our bid may be higher. Uh, bonding rate for that amount of money, the 800 plus thousand dollars to put those in, uh, the bonding rates could be higher at that time as well. Uh, and we lose the efficiency of our police department to operate in their own house, not having to go back and forth to Waterford uh, if they need to uh, detain uh, any arrested personnel. So uh, I think it was a good an item that, that was opened up for discussion. My personal feeling is to delay that gives us a public safety building that doesn't meet the intent of a fully operational police department. And uh, my recommendation is that we would move forward and keep the Sally Port and uh, detention cells in for those reasons. And continued rent payment to, to Waterford and unknown uh, inflation of construction costs and potential and you're right, I can't predict if bonding costs will be higher. 
two, three, Much four lower. years from now, they could be lower. Uh, Can't but be much lower. It, it's an unknown. But uh, but anyways, that's my point of view, and I, I welcome comments uh, from the rest of the board of selectmen um, uh, on that any, subject. Any uh, questions um, for Paul at, at, for what he presented on behalf of the vision committee and you know his lead in that, which has been immense. Um, any questions from the board of selectmen? I Roseanne, I, I think I have you muted and I can't unmute you. Um, so you have to mute yourself. Star six uh, will unmute you, Roseanne. Um, this is a new version of Zoom that I can't control everything. We had truck. There you go. 705-2876. Is that you, Roseanne? It is. All right. Nice to have you. Thank oh, you. Um, I just want to make sure your phone, you knew that your phone was muted so that we could uh, include you in any conversations. Um, Dan, you're on. Oh, Dan, I, I may have accidentally just muted you and I can't unmute you. Um, so star six, Dan, um, if you want to unmute yourself. Are there any there questions? There you go, Paul. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, if I may, um, I first want to say, Paul, I appreciate very much uh, the work you've done in your presentation tonight and getting ready for uh, the Board of Finance meeting. I think it's what's been requested. It's respectful uh, of the public that is still trying to you know, formulate an opinion on this project. Uh, it's respectful of the Board of Finance and what they've requested. I think this is what we needed to do. I appreciate that you've put in all this work. Um, I still support doing the full project, doing the holding cells. Uh, if we're going to do it, we really need to do it right. Uh, we've had, uh, I don't want to call it a windfall, but we've had the benefit of this FEMA money. Um, it alleviates some of the pressure for uh, financing bonding out into the future. It, it alleviates some of that problem. Um, I think the transparency that you've shown tonight and, and uh, in explaining this, uh, hopefully uh, alleviates some of the concerns that the Board of Finance had with uh, being truthful and upfront with this project. So uh, I'm all for going forward with it, uh, making this presentation to the Board of Finance as, as you have outlined it. And I'm hopeful that they will be receptive uh, to this project. I, I truly believe there's no better alternative. And I don't have any political motive in supporting it. Um, my only motive is that I truly believe it's right and what's best for the town. And uh, so I, I hope we can move forward in that way. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um, I, I, I know that Anna has something to share with us about the financing and some money that, um, you know, they're, they're, they're looking over the funding and then some of the funds that we use for the boardwalk um, have to um, be paid back um, through our capital projects plan. So, Anna, you gave me some details about 20 minutes ago on the phone. Um, I know we we're kind of scrambling a little bit. Do you want to try to update us a little bit on this? So, um, I, um, myself and Bill Shear have been um, working on reviewing the um, FEMA uh, storm records, and it is our determination that um, $203,560.89 was earmarked to um, uh, be a part of the $4.4 million appropriation that was approved in 2014. Um, what happened is during the FEMA application process, the, um, uh, that was what we were expected to get for um, the Sandy um, storm. And as time was going on and the town had a meeting with FEMA representatives, it was determined that we would be eligible um, for more funding because we built the, um, the boardwalk to future mitigation um, you know, hazards. And, and that's why it ended up being $836,000 instead of the 203,000 original estimate. 
Um, this has been um, going on um, since the, you know, uh, over um, six years and we are finally getting um, the information from FEMA that um, we have been approved for the fund. Um, so instead of $1.7 million being um, eligible to appropriate for um, the, this project, um, it's more uh, to the tune of $1.5 million. Uh, $1 do, you million have an ex do you have an exact figure? Um, $1,527,046.72. Zero four six seven two. Yes. Okay. Um, there's there's a, a bit of a deficit running in that capital projects um, account that we you know knowing that we were going to have some FEMA funds for the boardwalk. You know this this one point seven wasn't for the boardwalk. This this was for um, all sorts of public works, uh, recovery projects for a road that buckled in our town, for storm drain issues that we had. Some of it was for the boardwalk. Um, but this 200,000 um, some odd dollars um, is owed back to that capital plan um, that we uh, borrowed against to finish the boardwalk. Um, so it was kind of uh, news to me as it was coming up. I wasn't, I think none of us, well, Roseanne was obviously here, but because um, she's been here for 30 plus years. Um, but, but um, you know, I, I the financing of this, um, of rebuilding the boardwalk um, was creative. I mean, it was insurance money and the lawsuit money. Yes, the public trust donated some money. And um, we also had some, some of this money, uh, some of the project money that was left over. So um, there you go. So, um, so we have 1.5270467272 um, available uh, in the FEMA funding to uh, appropriate to move forward with the police station. Um, other questions for Anna on that matter? I had a thousand of them. When I first heard this, um, uh, but but there is a there was there is a deficit over there that we have to plug that hole, um, knowing that we were having FEMA funds eventually sent to us. <clears throat> and the question I have for Anna, uh, Anna, uh, you and Bill Sherry, have you spoken with anyone in FEMA or the state to make sure that this is the only amount of money that we have to set aside for uh, any time anything that actually had to do with the st both storms? As it's, re as it's related to the boardwalk, um, in going back to um, our original funding proposal, um, it's, you know, I believe it's the um, $203,560 that um, I noted. Okay. Anna, um, is there any money now? Oh, wait a minute, June, you can't speak. This is not public delegations. I'm sorry. Um, is this I'm just for questions to Anna. Yeah, you can't. I'm sorry, you can, this is a Board of Selectmen meeting. It's not open to the public for comment. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, they, we had that public delegation at the beginning of the meeting. So um, we'll be having to answer questions uh, offline um, at some point and, and be happy to do that to get some clear cut stuff. I'm sorry about that. Um, other questions for Anna on this subject? Okay. I'll make, um, make a motion. Uh, I'll amend it to what the one I have in front of me to the new figure. I'll move to approve a special appropriation in the amount of $1,527,046.72 for the public safety facility project. Funds of source being from Storm Sandy and from Storm Irene and forward to the Board of Finance for approval. This is in addition to the 5 million previously authorized in bonding for this project. And I'll note that I didn't specify how much from each storm because I'm sure the two figures that are in the motion provided to me have changed. But the uh, 1.52704672 is accurate. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Dan seconds that. Let's have some more comments and, and, and um, statements, if you will, on this. Um, if there's anything out there. 
Any comments? Yes. Yes, Rosanna? Yes, I'd like to. Yeah. Uh, so I think that in reflection, because we heard so many, many reports on the project and the progress, I think that what was clear to us uh, perhaps wasn't clear to some of the people that were sort of tuning in later, so to speak. But I do not feel that there was any attempt in any way to um, create any kind of subterfuge. I think the uh, police commission was very open in responding to any questions, going back to the table and discussing things that we brought up. And so <clears throat> any lack of information I, or lack of clarity, I think um, it, we just, I think it just didn't occur to us because we, we knew. So I feel very confident that um, in presenting a clearer picture, perhaps, to some of the people who sort of come on board later, I think is appropriate in the report to the Board of Finance. And again, I commend the people who work so hard on this, uh, on the commission, and also people uh, in town hall who put in extra effort as well. So in thinking about this, um, you know, we had the advantage of having the Dominion building for $1 a year for 15 years. And in those 15 years, we should have been savvy enough to set aside money each year to go towards what we were going to need to uh, provide a proper, proper facility for our emergency management folks. I think our bonding costs right now are relatively low. As far as the FEMA money, that money was given to us because of our, our need to respond to emergency situations and a crisis situation. And I think the use of that money for the a new emergency management building, which will uh, coordinate and con consolidate our emergency services, which will allow us to better respond, more rapidly and efficiently respond to future emergencies. Is it appropriate use of that money? Waterford, uh, yes, right now we know what the fee is for use of that facility, but that's not, that's not a standard fee. We have to renegotiate that, and that contract is coming up fairly soon. I doubt that they're going to want to extend the same courtesy to us, which was supposed to be a short-term arrangement, not long-term, and I think that uh, it's, I doubt that they're going to come in and say we can, uh, they'll allow us to use the space for less money, so I think it's pretty safe to say it's going to be uh, a hike in the cost if they even are willing to continue to share the services with us. My understanding is that they are becoming crowded and need space as well. So uh, for me, I think, as I've said before, um, let's do the job right. Let's get people in there. We've got the equipment here. Uh, at one time, we've got the disruption. We've got the public, you know, tuned into this now, into the project and the necessity for it. And to keep this stirred up for the next 10 years by piecemealing things out and trying to come up with the money for it, I think just creates more dissension, division. I think it's time for us to come together as a community, do the right thing, and get this building get our emergency management services into this building in a proper and safe environment to do the job what they're supposed, what, which they want to do, and that is to provide uh, the most important services to our community. It's not just a police station. It's emergency management, all of the services. And we can't have people running all over town to this spot and that spot trying to do the job that, that needs to be done. So I, I am fully in support, and I hope the rest of the board will continue. I hope this will be a unanimous decision tonight, again, that we go back and ask the Board of Finance to help us do the right thing. That's it. Thank you, Roseanne. And just to add really quickly before we uh, finish up, Mark, uh, and vote, uh, I think Dan Price brought up a good point last time uh, we had a meeting uh, with the new legislation for uh, police accountability. There might be some requirements for uh, things like uh, holding cells and, uh, you know, things in the police department that might be required. So 
I'd hate to get even further behind uh, where we need to be by not doing what's right right now. And that includes putting in the uh, Sally port, the uh, holding facilities and so forth like that and dispatch and uh, the other emergency management uh, services as well. Yeah, the, the police accountability bill, I, I know the chief's listening in. Um, I owe him a phone call from like late, late last week, but uh, um, you know, it was making my head spin of you know, some of the requirements that each municipality is gonna be required to um, provide uh, a level of training, but equipment and servers and backup and body cameras and all this certification that's coming down the pike as well. Yeah, we're not, you know, this police accountability thing, maybe will serve the citizens well, um, maybe, but it will also cost the citizens plenty. And we have to keep that in mind. And, and part of this requirement is to have a proper facility. Listen, the Board of Selectmen's responsibility is to look for the, what would benefit the, the town, uh, the entire town. We look, we look decades forward and saying what's best for the town. And, and time after time after time, this Board of Selectmen, bipartisan um, and, and unified, has, uh, has voted unanimously to, to move this project forward to solve this problem that's been existing for 15 years. And really, they've been talking about it for decades. Of, of proper facilities. Uh, we, have the, we have the solution. We bought the building on a two-to-one vote at a referendum. Uh, the taxpayers said, go out and buy this building. This is, this is going to work. It's a lot better than buying a, a building, a, a, a big new one, and, and double the cost. Um, and if not double, certainly much more money and cer certainly much more time uh, to, to put together a new building, et cetera. So, so here we are. We're, we're there. We have five million dollars that were was appropriated. We bought the building for three million. We have two hundred thousand. We have this one point five and change, um, and we'll vote on that. And then we'll talk about whether we're going to finish this building now, or leave it for our kids to finish, or at least the next generation of selectmen, if you will, to finish, um, and whether that makes sense or not. This 1.5 combined with the 2 million we have appropriated already will enable us to get the project started. Um, we'll be able to award the bid and say, here it is. And then the extra financing required, which if we're taking off two, so it looks like we would need up to $700,000 more in financing to finish off the Sally ports, if you will. Uh, and the jail cells and all that goes along with prisoner processing. Um, uh, that's an add-on into the contract anyway, Paul, right? It was a Sally. It was it's Sally. not an add-on. It's in the base price. It's a, it was a deduct if we decided not to do it. It is okay. in the bidded price for the project. The seven point. So it still sits out there separately. It can be re removed from the contract with the contract with the okay. vendor, but it is in the base price of the three, three million dollar. Okay. All right. Price. Um, very good. So, um, so let's, let, we have a, we have a motion on the table for 1.5 million, unless there's any other comments from the selectmen. Yeah, I, I just, yes. I just like to make a, a, a couple of comments. Um, you know, from a transparency standpoint, I was fully prepared to, to once again, address the, the category of items that were omitted from this project at the board of finance meeting. Unfortunately, we all know it was a very long meeting. That information was presented late. I have addressed it before. The vision committee addressed it. So no intended purpose to keep that from the public. Uh, and I will go over it line item by line item uh, in front of the Board of Finance. Regarding the motion that's on the table, this is an opportunity to save the taxpayers money, to save us interest on borrowing additional money to, to allocate the FEMA money. It, it, it's it's a good opportunity um, giving this town its emergency response personnel a fully operating functional building is what the goal has always been by the vision committee we did not receive pressure to keep it at the five million dollar budget many times in our vision committee meetings i personally stated you know supported by the vision committee 
we would recommend what was needed for a fully functional and operational facility and that the cost was going to be what the cost was when we got our bids in. There was no pressure put on anyone on the vision committee to bring a project in at $5 million and or at $6 million. That's why we came forward with the recommendation of the pr project at 7.2 million, because it gives our emergency responders what they need to efficiently and effectively serve the taxpayers of East Lyme. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, we heard all sorts of stories like that. So listen, you, I think the vision committee had, by the way, another bipartisan, um, several different groups coming together, uh, a group that uh, met 40 times, uh, both uh, you know, in the town hall and then they also had field trips to different uh, places to look at other police stations, et cetera. So, you know, I, I've heard bits and pieces from meetings all put together, but out of context, um, it becomes misinformation. It becomes half a truth. It becomes not part of the entire package of the story. So um, thank you for clarifying. Yeah, I'm, you know, the, the price is the price and, the, and, the, um, and what you folks came up with independently on the vision committee. There were 12 of you, I think, um, plus department heads. Um, you did that with the taxpayers in mind, with the citizens in mind, with the police in mind, with the best facility would be in no matter what we needed to do, uh, without limitations, this is what we needed to do to have a fully functioning public safety building. I uh, appreciate all the work that your members and, and you did. Um, any, any other comments? Yeah, I do. Um, it's Dan. Dan. Um, you know, I, and I sat on that committee and, and, and uh, enjoyed uh, being a part of it. Um, our mandate was never... Uh, refurbish as brand new. It was to make something that would be good and adequate and useful and functional uh, for 50 years into the future. And uh, we tried to accomplish that. We were careful with, with the things that we changed and, and recommendations that we made. Um, the intent was only for the good of the town. Um, there was no politics involved in that meeting, those meetings. Um, the time is now. Uh, we're, we're, we're facing uncertainties in the future for, for a number of reasons. We need to have uh, our public safety complex that will consolidate all of the functions that will be housed there so that they can be efficient, uh, so that we can react to, to the unknowns that will face us. It'll be wonderful to have additional space on that second level. Who knows how we're going to, what needs we may have with social distancing and and people distancing in different departments. We may be very, very thankful that we have that space. Um, it, this is the moment. It's been kicking around for so long. I hope that everyone can come together and, and, and do what I think is right for the town. That's it. Thank you, Dan. We'll call the vote then. All in favor, um, say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Are there any abstain? We'll show that the motion carries unanimously five, zero, zero. Um, terrific. The next item on the agenda, let me see if I can bring that up. Um, discussion of possible action, the completion of the public safety building project and alternative, fin alter uh, alternative financing options. Um, Roseanne, you, you, you might want to be the one who starts this discussion. Um, you've been pretty vocal about finishing this project, doing it right. Um, and I think that's, that's a subject matter here. If you're still with us, Roseanne. I am. Yes. I am. Maybe you um, can reiterate some of how you're feeling about including the cells or including, or not, not what do they call that, um, value engineering the project down to a place where we're taking things out that will need to be done later, that we acknowledge that the price of this building and this project is 7.2 and we should fully finance it to that number. Roseanne, if you could pick it up from there. Yes, uh, as I said earlier, I think that to try to piecemeal this, we've seen so many examples of this in the past, 
almost every single building that we have. We've downsized to make it try to fit a specific number, and then we end up spending more money in the long run, plus not being able to do the job right from the beginning that we had wanted. Uh, and I think that it's it's good money. It's it's just money thrown thrown away. Uh, instead of, as I said, when we had the equipment there, we had the personnel there, we had the specs. Uh, and let's also talk about if we only take, if we only get part of the money, uh, you know, every time we go out to bonding, there's not only the money that's being borrowed, it's the expense of it. But also, it's always having people on edge. You know, it's all, instead of being able to move forward and talk about some other things that might need to be done, you know, this is always kind of these projects that aren't done correctly are always, we're always trying to figure out how we're going to make up for it. I just, I just think of the high school. Uh, when the high school opened after the addition was open, there, we were already short five classrooms. We've never been able to make up those five classrooms you know, after the addition. So you've got teachers that really can't do the job that they should be doing because after every single class, they're gathering up their materials and running off to another room and trying to set up an atmosphere and set up a class. That's just one example. Um, you know, and yes, all of our buildings, you don't just buy the building and then you never have to do anything else to it. All of the buildings require maintenance. Of course, there's going to be some continuing costs. Um, so... I I think I think that it, it I personally think it would be irresponsible of us not to go forward with what we know needs to be done. That's it. Thank you, Roseanne. To to clear the record, it's forty eight thousand dollars to rent um, holding cells and, and processing uh, space and evidence space right now in Waterford. That goes up five percent a year by our agreement, there was a three-year agreement that they graciously extended to four. Should we go any longer than that, they were going to ask us to sit down and renegotiate that. That was a short term as has been put mm -hmm. up with a, a bit of sacrifice on their behalf to be neighborly yeah. and uh, help us out. I, yes, I would expect it. And I don't, I don't say a number because it is a negotiation. I want to represent mm -hmm. them the people of our town um, as, as, as good as possible. But I also think the, the good people of Waterford should be paying our bills. So um, we'll find the middle. We'll find what the common ground is. It'll be more than what we're paying now. Uh, we, we know that. We acknowledge that. They've, they've acknowledged that as well. And if you just take the cost of the salary ports, the cells, um, and all that goes around, goes into that, is that about 700000 Paul, 800000 Am I in the ballpark there? 810, I believe. Okay. If you take $810,000 and you, and you look at the financing for that over the 20 year bond, um, it'd be much cheaper than building the cells than paying for uh, Waterford um, 48,000 plus 5%, et cetera, et cetera, over the next 20 years. Uh, even if the mm -hmm. price would stay 48,000 without any increase, which we know isn't the case, it would be about the same price. So, um, yeah, it makes sense. So, and um, I think we've also mentioned earlier the security issue of evidence. And uh, any of these cases that go to trial, uh, which fortunately we don't have that many, but it only takes one to end up costing the town a lot of money or losing an important case. And I think that... Uh, that the, the ability to keep evidence in one place and we are resp we're responsible for it. We should not be storing that stuff and transporting it to another town that we don't have control over. Correct, correct. And Mark, just to be clear, that, that bid off deduct for the Sally Port and detention cells was $810,591 and it included $73,400 of contingency. Okay. So if we didn't have any extra funding um, other than what, we've, what we're proposing for the appropriation plus what we already have in the, in the bank, um, uh, we could take $800,000 off the cost of the project um, um, as a deduct and not have the cells built now. Of course, it would cost a lot more later on. And that's why this Board of Selectmen and the Vision Committee unanimously said, no, go with the project and go forward with, with the full project. Uh, don't do this later. 
it's not wise. Um, and, so, on that, and on that subject, you know, the public comment that uh, brought forward the idea of delaying the Sally Ports and using the money from the sale of Main Street to cover a portion of, you know, whatever that property is worth on the open market, 500000 600000 whatever it turns out to be, that wouldn't cover the current, today's cost of the Sally Ports plus whatever inflation. But that money could be earmarked uh, at the discretion of the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance to take care of these uh, items that are going to need replacement five and 10 years down the road. Uh, wow. If we don't get low SIP money or other, other grant money to pay for it. So that money would be used to help save taxpayers money potentially, depending on how both boards act in the future when that money becomes available. Right, right. And, and that's been brought up, the, the, the sale of the Main Street a building that uh, is currently owned by Dominion. We buy, we, we um, move it into a Brownfield um, program to remove the pollutants in the, uh, at the property, um, which has been identified already. Uh, that the police work at right now, by the way. And it's uh, also, also, Mark, you know, this police accountability uh, bill has just been passed. Uh, there may be some funding attached to that that may come our way in order to help us meet the requirements, uh, the stricter standards that are there. Uh, you know, that hasn't really been discussed by the legislature yet, but it's very possible that there will be, by application, uh, some grant money available, especially to smaller communities such as ours. Right. Especially if we're trying, especially if we are, if we uh, are trying to, in good faith, meet the new criteria that's expected. Uh, and the other thing, um, am I? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The other, um, it's simply, it's the right way to do it. You, you don't build a police station without holding cells. It, it just doesn't make sense. And the other things. The liability of transporting mm -hmm. uh, a, a detainee um, into another muni another municipality, um, traveling down Route 156, Route 1 into into Waterford, uh, and then when you're you're transferring that individual uh, to their uh, custody, uh, if something happens, you can count on the town of Eastline being sued, uh, mm -hmm. even if it's not our fault and if it's Waterford's fault or, or, or their negligence, we're going to be on the hook and. And you can't calculate uh, those risks or, or the costs that, that could that could cost the town. Um, and then on chain of custody of, of evidence, you know, I've I've tried criminal cases, I've defended people in criminal court, and I know one of the first things you look at is trying to keep evidence from coming in. And if there's a chain of custody issue, uh, any decent uh, defense attorney is going to seize on it. It's going to keep that evidence out, and you don't want to be the police department that screwed up on chain of custody on a serious case. And, you know, we've had some very serious cases in this town. We've had a number of murder cases. So uh, we can't be screwing around with uh, chain of custody issues. And we got to do it right. That's all I have to say about it. I agree. You know, if I could just add to, you know, as everyone knows, I spent almost 30 years in law enforcement. And someone said compare East Limes to any other you've ever seen, there is no comparison. East Limes is the most inadequate facility I have ever seen a police department trying to function in in 30 years of uh, law enforcement work. Um, to not equip them fully would be similar to not putting up the new smart boards they have in schools or, um, you know, or not having security at the doors anymore, or something along those lines too. We have an opportunity now to finish this project to the best of our ability with the funds available to where they can move in. They'll be able to house their own prisoners when necessary. They'll be able to process them there. Even if we're not holding someone right now, if it's a DWI arrest or just to simply process and release, they have to go to Waterford. And now if it's in our own town, you do it. It's much easier to take them and, and you know, get them processed and released. With DWIs, you have to hold them for six hours, depending upon until they're capable of being released. Now we don't have to have an officer go back out of town to release them when this happens. So I'm fully supportive of doing it right. You look at what we have done. Our town hall, even the architect to build it said the basement, the lower level where we have so many departments now, 
was strictly meant for storage. Why do we want to continue to make the same mistakes by not doing it right now? Um, bonding costs are as low as they'll probably ever be, so I'm fully supportive of finishing the project and the full amount for the uh, jail cells, dispatch, emergency management, and the, uh, the detention in Valley Port and the cells. I'd like to uh, also mention the library. The library is, has been for the past at least five years at a minimum crying that they need additional space. And why is that? Well, we built a nice building, but in fact, we didn't build to the original design, to the original request. There was supposed to be additional room there. There was supposed to be storage in the basement. Instead, to save money, built on a cement slab, no basement, so no storage. It was supposed to be a second story. That was eliminated to save money. And although, as I said, almost every single project in town, you can see that it was built for that time period, but no real look to the future. And quite frankly, I mean, even with the, even with the community center, I mean, that's, what, 40 years old now, 35 years old? I mean, you, you, can't, pre you can't predict how, who would have predicted 35 years ago the development in this town? In the demand in the demand for services. I mean, I, I you know, I've, I've lived here over 50 years. I never envisioned this explosion of growth within just the last, let's say, 12, 12 or 12 years. Right. Right. No, good points. I mean, the inefficiencies of some of those buildings um, are incredible, uh, especially the library community center. Uh, and, and that's right. They they they. They cheapened the project, they value engineered the project um, uh, so that it could pass rather than building it that would last um, um, for decades and serve the needs for decades. Um, and, and really for the last 10 years, the library comes to me every year going, we need more space. Mm -hmm. um, well, if I may, yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, you know, having sat and listen for the last several years. Um, I've heard people come in and complain about the short sightedness of some of the projects that were done in the past and how we should have done it right. And I've heard that complaint over and over and over again. This is our opportunity to try to do something right, do the full project, not leave something hanging off there where we're going to be criticized uh, down the road and uh, pointed out to us over and again that it was a mistake not to build. The, uh, the holding cells or, or the elevator shaft. So let's just do it right. Let's, I hope everybody can come together and, and get their head around this and try to do what's right for the town and do the full project and get it done so we can move on to solve other problems that we need to focus on and we need to solve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Roseanne. Paul, Kevin, for your comments as well. Um, you know, there's a, there's, I don't know if there's a prepared motion, um, basically, especially with the late hour uh, adjustment. Well, I think we, we have to, Mark, I probably have to have a resolution being a little more specific because what we'd be going back to ask for now is the difference between what we have, what we just requested tonight with the uh, FEMA money and what we need to ask. So probably Anna might have, have a better uh, idea of whether we can do anything tonight or we need to prepare some other type of motion. So um, if, if the intention of, of the board would be to recommend um, uh, increasing the amount of the bonds, then we would need a, a new resolution. And when dealing um, with a resolution, we have to make sure that we have it um, properly available for residents to review in advance of of, of a meeting. Um, at this point, if um, we were going to entertain um, uh, bonding, we would deal with a new resolution and the new resolution would include what, what um, we wanted to increase the bonding by and it would also include language to rescind the resolution that this board had approved at a previous meeting to increase the bonding by $2.2 .2 million. So it would be like an all-inclusive updated resolution. 
In the meantime, we could have a motion um, that forwards our intentions to the Board of Finance um, and to the public that uh, we want to fully f finance the project um, uh, to the tune of $7.2 million. Um, um, the difference being a uh, bond resolution for time. If we're going to have to meet again on the bond resolution, yeah. do we really gain anything making that motion tonight? And that actually that motion is out there right now because our last one does move the entire pro project forward. Now we need to, and and the minutes will also reflect that you know we discussed it and want to move forward. So uh, without a prepared well, without a prepared motion and with a little more specificity, I'd like to just wait until we can do the resolution at a at our next meeting. Suzanne? Now, now we're not we're not going to bond about seven point two million, are we? No, uh, rough math, if I can speak for Anna, is the additional bonding amount would be in the $658,588.28 if you subtract the uh, $1.5 million in change from the 2.2 that we started with. Okay, all right. I think we should just take a step back, table it to the next meeting. Let's get the resolution done the right way. And yeah, let um, let Anna let Anna talk to get it through bond right. council and a good resolution that everybody's comfortable with. So at this point, we have the appropriation for one point five million dollars that we'll forward to the board of finance for their consideration, and at a later date, we'll come together with the rest of the financing package. In the meantime, the one point five in the two million we have we'll be able to award the contract with a deduct initially and then hopefully if we can put our heads together that we're all on board on, on solving this problem and finding the solution and finishing the building properly we can add the uh, cells back on to it. Um, so, so that's it. So it, it seems like there's a consensus to um, finish this project and not let it sit half done. Um, which is a good thing, in my opinion. Um, so we'll, um, really, that is all we have on our agenda this evening. Um, I think healthy discussions, I think confident and positive discussions happen tonight, and I thank you all for your participation. Um, and I will let the Board of Finance know that we're, we're sending that appropriation to them. So um, that being said, I guess we a motion to adjourn. I moved by Kevin. Se Sir. Second, Dan Cunningham. Thank you all for coming. All in favor, say aye. 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 Have a good night, everyone. Good night.